This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance or training purposes. Can I give you a call back because my manager is calling me and I gotta go talk to my manager and I don't want to leave you on hold. Can I give you a call back? Welcome back, drivers, to the Recruiter Call Channel. And in this MTC, we're going to be looking at Ace Transportation out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. You guys know Ace. If you don't, this is a variant of VL Trucking. Now, I'm not sure VL Trucking is was out of Iowa as well, but if you guys want to know a little bit more about VL Trucking, I have done a made to call video to them that you guys can go and check out i will have that link in the description below but ace transportation cedar rapids iowa they have a website not much on there to give you any particular good information but in this strange call i was talking to the recruiter shout out to the recruiter for the a little bit of information that she was giving to us but unfortunately the call was cut short because she had to talk to the manager and then she said that she would give me a call back this is months later and still waiting for that call back <laughs> you guys know i'm not going to get that call back but ace transportation out of cedar Rapids, is it Cedar Rapids? Out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. If you guys want to know about Ace Transportation, stay tuned. Okay, so can you give me a little bit more uh, detail on uh, what you guys are looking for? Sure, so basically Ace Transportation is an owner operator based company. We hire owner operators with their own equipment who want to bring it onto our carrier. If you don't have your own equipment, we do have a lease program available. The lease program is a straight lease or in other terms, lease to return. So it's a rental. So you're not committing on day one to the next two, three, four years to own this truck. You're basically leasing the truck from us to run with our carrier as an owner. Owned. After it's a contract for one year. After that year is up, you can either remain in the same truck and just restart another year of lease on it, or you can upgrade it into a different newer truck and do the lease on that. So basically the point is, is that every year you can upgrade into a newer truck. So you're never in the same truck exceeding, you know, five, six, 700,000 miles on it. Um, it's a walkaway lease as well. So if you don't want to fulfill the full year, it's not a good fit. You give us a 10 day notice, bring the truck back. We can terminate the contract early. We run all 48 states coast to coast, except New York City. So usually two to three weeks out, two to three days home. We are a hazmat carrier pulling uh, hazmat on both drive-in and reefer. And it's a combination. So we work with direct, uh, direct customers for hazmat and spot market standard loads. So it's a combination of both. It's not just one or the other. Um, but that's pretty much how that works. And then it's percentage-based pay. Since you're an owner-operator, you get paid percentages rather than just cents per mile. And the percentage is determined by the trailer you pull. So if you're pulling dry van, you keep 80% of line haul, we take 20. If you pull reefer, you keep 78%, we take 22. That 20 or 22 covers things like cargo liability and trailer insurance, trailer rental, dispatching fee, ELD, pre-pass usage device, and IFSA preparation. Um, fuel and tolls is owner operator's expense, but we can provide you with both fuel card and the pre-pass for the tolls. Fuel gets deducted weekly for whatever amount you use, and tolls are deducted monthly. Um, you are by all means, can use your own fuel card. There's no restriction for that. A lot of my owner ops end up having their own fuel card that they use. At that point, you just send us the receipts because we prepare your IFTA. Uh, my trucks that are available for lease are all automatic, governed at 70 miles per hour. Freight liners, internationals, Volvos, and Kenworths is what we work with. And those trucks are going to be no older than 2019 and could be as new as 2024. Just all depends on availability of when you're looking to start. 19s and 20s are 1,000, 21s and 22s are 1,100, and 23s and 24s are 1,200. Now, that's a weekly payment, and it covers the bobtail insurance, registration, maintenance plan, and the lease payment. So it's a fixed deduction. Let me get this straight because that was a lot to uh, swallow. So, so I'm a so I'm a company driver coming from another company. 
uh, interested coming in to drive for you guys. All this is 1099, so you guys will help me set up my LLC if I come in and do the lease rent deal with you guys? So it is a 1099 position, correct? So you're, you are an independent contractor. Uh, we don't have a requirement for you to have an LLC. Now, of course, as an independent contractor, it definitely benefits you to have like a LLC set up for yourself and work under an EIN number versus a social. But it's not something that we require you to have that it's mandatory. So you can, by all means, work under your social and have your, you know, personal biz, uh, personal bank account attached to that, uh, you know, pay information. Now, if you need assistance, now I, I think I have, we have a person, he doesn't like work in the company helping drivers get, uh, open up their LLCs, but I think he's worked with like internal staff and I've had my GM before offer his number to another driver to assist with opening it up. So I think it is an option if you need that assistance. I think as far as his um, work, he basically just sets it up like with the federal government, like the IRS. So depending on where you're from, like which state, sometimes the state also requires additional things you need to do to like register that business under your state. But so he doesn't really do that part. He just basically helps you get the, the initial process started to have the entity be acknowledged by IRS. So I do think we can um, potentially connect you with somebody that could assist with that. But really, since it's not a requirement, I don't have anybody like on payroll that helps out. My recommendation at that point would be just to contact your local accountant or somebody maybe you work with to to do your taxes already, and they can help you walk you know walk you through to to setting that up. But you can also do it yourself online. Uh, how much experience uh, you guys is looking for? So my insurance will require at least a minimum of six months that we can verify. Now, obviously, the more the better, but six months is like the minimum that we need in order to even consider the application. Um, anything beyond that is obviously great. Uh, how much experience do you have right now? I got eight years. Um, Pre-employment okay. pre -employment drug screening, uh, hair follicles, or urine, or both? Urine. You're, do you guys accept SAP drivers? Uh, no. If there's any violations on clearing house, unfortunately, it doesn't get approved. Okay, okay. Uh, being that you said that I would be running two types of uh, trailers, the reefer and the uh, and drive-in, and I have to have my hazmat, do you guys run other lanes other than the, the states? Do you guys go outside of the states like Canada? No, everything is within U.S. borders, so just within the 48 states here, the, and including like New York State. So Buffalo, places like that, we go. We just don't cross into, you know, the city. So Queens, Bronx, that's really not something we operate in. But nothing out of the country to Mexico or Canada. Um, now, the drive-in reefers, uh, we have primarily drive-ins. Now, the reefers, out of 300 units that I have, I think 70 are reefers. And I think right now they're all on the road. So usually the, the most common trailer, the the driver gets signed up with is the drive van. If you want to switch to a reefer at some point and, and it becomes available, that is an option. Then you just get routed back through our area. We swap the trailer out for you. And then we swap the percentage in the system from 80% to 78%. But other than that, since these are live loads, you're always going to be with the equipment, the, the tractor and the trailer, including on your home time. Um, but pretty much we run everywhere. A lot of our hazmat like drive van is on the East Coast and Midwest. Usually West Coast is very popular for reefer hazmat, uh, but that doesn't mean that every single load you do is going to be hazmat. Because, for example, if you get a load from our customer in Jersey, and let's say this load is going to Arizona, Arizona doesn't really produce any kind of hazmat coming out. So likely you're going to have a regular standard load coming out of Arizona to get back to a better area, which those very better areas are typically East Coast and Midwest because you can do a lot of hazmat drive-in loads. Um, but we really go everywhere. So the, you know, the, we shoot for having all drivers do at least 3,000 miles a week or like the average 3,000 miles a week, but not every driver can um, utilize their clock properly to run that kind of miles. So at least you need to make 2,500 miles a week. And that's what we're going to push for is that we're going to run you effectively to make sure you're making at least 2,500 miles a week. Your dispatcher would send you two loads, depending obviously where you are in the country, whatever they find. You know, here's this load or this load. Which one would you like? And then they kind of assign it that way. 
can we pick can we choose our own lows from a from a low board or we we just dispatch from a dispatcher no the dispatcher the dispatcher is going to be working directly with you so you can communicate with the dispatcher if you have any i guess preferences or restrictions but because we are an otr company running all 48 states we don't really have too much uh wiggle room as far as like not operating in certain areas because i know a lot of drivers want to say well i'm an owner operator i just want to be in this specific region which we're not a regional company you know um our our loads are going to go from anywhere to anywhere within the borders so obviously we want to make sure that the drivers we hire for this program are able to pretty much go anywhere so can i give you a call back because my manager is calling me and i gotta go talk to my manager and i don't want to leave you on hold can i give you a call back <laughs> All right, Ace Transportation, everybody. Wow. Now, for those of you that don't know uh, about Ace Transportation, they were a variant of VL Trucking of back in the day. According to uh, one of their former drivers that I talked to uh, a while back, the company was being split into two and VL Trucking was being migrated into what is now known as Ace Transportation. Now, I'm not sure if VL Trucking is still around. I'm, I'm assuming it is. I only seen a, maybe a few trucks with the VL Trucking trappings on it, but Ace Transportation now is up, running, and moving quite alone, offering 80% of the load gross. You will have a dispatcher there that will choose the loads for you. You'll be able to pick amongst the chosen loads that they will get. You have to have your hazmat because they do run hazmat loads dry and or and or reefer at one point or the other you will have to have your tankers but i don't think that you need your tankers because she didn't mention anything about tankers but she said that ace trucking is now a full owner operator ish type company you have a truck you can go over there and lease on with them if you don't have your truck they have lease options as not to own it is lease to rent so basically you're renting their trucks to run their loads don't make no sense to me either uh, you will run you, they will try to get you to run at least 3,000 to 2,500 miles a week. I'm assuming you're going to definitely need that because they high, uh, they high year trucks like 2022s, 23s, and the new 24s is going to run you in the thousands of maybe about 12 to 1500 dollars every week of course you had to pay for your own responsibilities including the fuel uh, you can come with your own fuel card and they will also give you the pre-pass and the and the uh passes that you need to, for tolls and stuff which that is coming out of your pocket as well of course she says no sap so that means if you're in the SAP program or have any problems with the clearinghouse, they won't accept you. But if you have six months, which I want you guys to really, really think about, especially if you're a new driver coming out here, understand six months jumping into owner operations is not enough time to learn both the trucking side of driving and the trucking business side of trucking so i just want you guys to know that before you decide to say hey six months i'm good to go they have somebody there to help you put your llc together they say that it's not a requirement you can run up under your 
social security number but let me stop you right there being that i came from a 1099 deal back in the day and i use my own personal social security number you don't want to do that you don't want to have your personal business tied up with your business because if anything happens and if any business is attached to your social security you your person uh your your personal and your business can be targeted especially by the irs i'm just saying so in my opinion do not never when you go to any of these type of companies and you do a lease make sure you get yourself an llc first talk to your cpa make sure you get all that stuff together before you decide to go lease with any of these type of companies all right all right well that's gonna do it uh if anybody works or drives for ace anybody drives for vl trucking any of the of the of the guys of the past that drove for vl trucking yo let us know in the comments below are you driving for ace trucking now uh since they converted over let us know in the comments below drivers if you drive for ace let us know your experience with ace trucking is they a good company to drive for or a bad company to drive for don't know my name's lockout men and this is the mtc on the recruiter call channel if you guys want to get your suggestions in get them in now you can do it two three you can do it three ways all right you can hit that cash app get me some coffee put the name of the company you want to know about in the notes or you can hit me up in the gmail that's lockout man podcast guest at gmail.com or you can leave your suggestions right here in the comments until next time everybody who's next, next.